the network analysis exercise. Let's have a look at this. Uh, I've already done this exercise, of course, um, but I'll show you. We'll go through the, the main steps again, creating a new project, and we'll look at the, the instructions as well and see what they say. But first of all, let's go to the instructions. Um, they begin with uh, some information on network analysis. We, you should definitely read through these. Uh, we'll have a quick look at them now just to go through some basic concepts, um, mostly focusing on these figures. Uh, here we have a network. You should have received the network analysis lecture, but um, let's just um, discuss a couple of points here that perhaps weren't really uh, in, the, in the lecture, focusing more on the algorithm in the, in the lecture. We have the concept of where to join the network. Um, we, we've spoken about navigating our way through the network. Once we're on it, we've assumed that we are actually standing on a node, one of these nodes, but uh, all, not all of our locations that we're investigating may be on uh, a node. So there are two main categories or choices that you can make for joining a network. Some network analyses will allow you, if you're starting from this point, to just jump onto the closest point to the network, which may be up here like this. Alternatively, uh, the, the analysis may insist that you join the closest node, that you have to start from a node, that you're, you're only allowed to move between nodes. This, in effect, creates a temporary node uh, by joining the line here. It's not entirely the case, but uh, we start our analysis at this point. And then let's say we want to move to, uh, if we're going to travel to point B, this analysis we could either go from here to C and then down to B there, or we could join D, A, and B there. Two different routes. Uh, we will still get to the destination in the end. The distance to that destination would change uh, quite dramatically. I mean, quite evidently, if we wanted to go to, to, to node A from here, it would be more convenient to go that way. Um, why join the network up there? Uh, so this might require some other uh, um, tool to say which would be the best solution. Usually you can always join a node. This extra of just joining the network somewhere along a line is not always implemented. So we have that idea. Um, we have also spoken about in the lecture about the, the, the concept of the buffer, where we can take a point or a line or a polygon, and we can buffer out around these. And this will determine a sort of an area of influence or to, to, uh, to determine whether something is within a particular distance close enough to uh, a, a point of interest or a feature of interest. Um, that's, uh, that, that's the buffer, which has an equivalent or in network analysis it's called the, the service area. So there are a couple of figures here that we're going to try and illustrate uh, the service area concept with. Uh, let's start at point A and our buffer around point A the radius of four goes out like this. If we force ourselves to stick to the network, then we can travel along the lines only out to these distances. But if we assume that we can move away from the lines of the network at some cost, we can't move freely from the network, but at some greater cost because we're traveling across a rough surface or where we can no longer use our vehicle of choice with a bicycle or what have you, we have to walk. So we're slowed down. And so rather than being able to go the full distance of four, which we can do along the network, um, as we can see soon when this figure appears again, we, if we're traveling along, then it's the distance we can travel is equivalent to the, the buffer. As soon as we move from the network, it's a reduced distance. We, we can no longer travel as far out. We get some quantity there. Um, and this, this is our, our service area. Uh, and how do we calculate this? Well, this is equivalent to saying, we, once we start at this point, we can travel out a certain distance with a cost or go out along the network with no cost. And then from that point, we can go out a certain distance from the network at a cost or continue along it with no cost or this much reduced cost until we've used up all of our fuel, all of our time, all of our whatever it is. And then we can just join the, this, the, these, these spheres of influence from each extended point. So here we have, we're utilizing everything, all of our cost to move outwards regardless of the network or moving along it um, a piece. And then if we move along the network, we've still got some fuel, say, left. Then we can travel out from our network so much distance or travel along it. And once we've traveled along it, we can then 
move out from the network at a particular cost or just travel along the network. So it's this choice between doing one, one or the other. Uh, and we can then build up our uh, service area. Um, so that's the concept of the difference between um, the, the service area and the buffer. We've also um, looked at uh, um, how to actually get onto the network. So there's one last thing actually perhaps uh, connected to this, and that is which, which has been taken up on the lecture, um, and that's the idea of nodes, how we can actually get onto the network or what connects parts of the network that we actually have to have um, uh, nodes. We can see here this line does not connect to this line until we break it and say that it connects at this node here. So there needs to be a node on both lines. Both lines actually have to stop at this location coincident with each other on a node and then they meet and we can go from one line to the other freely. Otherwise, we are locked in. We're traveling that whole distance. We cannot stop there. So that's creating a, a, the basics of the network. And then we can fine tune it. Um, we can um, say that we have certain speed limits so we can adjust it. It doesn't have to be um, purely distance. The cost of traveling along, along a network may vary with, say, speed, time of day, um, or surface roughness, or what have you, the, the surface type of, on the road if we have access to that information. If we don't have access to inf that information, then we can't use it. We can also adjust the network to say that we cannot turn certain directions when we come to a junction. Even if it, it looks as if it should be physically possible, we might not be able to turn left or we might not be able to turn right. We may be obliged to turn one direction or another, which is a similar concept. So these are things we can add into the network as well if we have that information, which again, we might not do. And in, for this exercise, you won't have that information. So those are the basics of building up a network, concepts that we need to think about, uh, moving from one place to another. But this is just a quick summary of uh, the, some of the theory behind what a network is, not so much the network analysis. For that, you should go to the lecture.